Welcome to CalCAP 37. Today we're going to be discussing Euler's method as well as Newton's law of cooling. What is Euler's method? We've been talking about differential equations um, for the past couple classes, and there are a lot that we can solve, but there are a lot more that we can't solve. Uh, meaning we can't get them back into their original function. We can't integrate them. And so Euler's method allows us to approximate f of x values for a differential equation uh, without actually knowing that original function, that original equation. And so we mostly use this with differential equations that we cannot um, integrate. We cannot find the original function. So Euler's method basically takes us through kind of like a stair-stepping method. And so if we're given a graph of a function, um, we basically want to use kind of, like I said, a stair-stepping method um, where we have delta x's and, um, oops, wrong way, sorry, delta x's and delta y's, which should go in the right direction. So delta x's and delta y's. So basically, we want to kind of stair step until we are able to kind of approximate that value. And so, um, you know, we might get our approximation is over here when our real value is up here. And so that's the goal with Euler's method is to make those tiny stair steppers so small that we can accurately um, figure out the slopes and that way we can actually accurately figure out that original f value. And so this. Um, method that we have below, the steps we have below is the steps that we're going to take in the next um, example. And so basically we're beginning at a point and there's really, I guess, four, three things we need to find. Um, first, we need to find the slope using our differential equations. And then we're, we're given an, a delta x. Um, normally the problem will give you a delta x and we use that, and then we're asked to find a delta y based on the slope and the delta x. So we choose to go over 0.2, and then based on the slope and the um, delta x, we can calculate our delta y, how far we're going to go up. And then we have this new point that we define as our original point plus delta x, and then our original y plus delta y. And so I know like this, this sounds like a lot of um, steps, a lot of process. It, it is. Um, but it's very repetitive, and once you kind of get the hang of it, it'll be a lot easier. Um, so we're going to look at this example on the next slide. Um, so we're given, uh, let f be a function that satisfies dy dx equals x plus y with f of 2 equals 0. We're asked to use Euler's method um, and increments of delta x point two, equals 0 0.2 to approximate f of 3. So again, if you think about dy dx equals x plus y, um, we know how to solve separable differential equations. This is not one of them. Um, so this would be really hard for us to try to integrate. Um, so we're just going to use Euler's method to approximate um, f of 3. And so first thing we need to do is we need to set up um, five columns. So your first column is your xy, your original point. Second column is dy dx. We get this from our differential equation. This is actually x plus y. Um, our delta x, we're given that too, that's 0 0.2. Our delta y, like we saw in the slide before, this is equal to our dy dx times delta x, always. And then we have our new point, x plus delta x, and then y plus delta y. And so basically, we're going to keep going in increments of 0.2 um, from 2 until we end up at 3. So we really should be going... Um, 2, 2.2, 2.3, or 2. Point, sorry, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, and then 3. So we're going up in these increments in our x value. So that's kind of what that column is going to look like. Um, so oops. the first thing I want to do is I want to start with my original point. So my original point, when I plug in 2, I get 0. And so my dy dx, I plug in 2 for x plus 0 for y, so my dy dx is 2. My delta x that's given to me, it is always 0 0.2. And so when I'm looking for my delta y, I'm going to take my delta x times my dy 
dx, so I'm going to multiply these two together. And so 2 times 0 0.2 gives me 0 0.4. And so then my new point, I take 2 plus 0 0.2, so 2.2, and then my y is going to be 0 plus 0.4. And so this new point is going to be 0 0.4. And so then, when we go all the way back, our new point becomes 2.2 and 0 0.4, and that's the point that we're starting with all over again. So when I plug this 2.2 plus 0 0.4 into x plus y, I shall get 2.6. Um, delta x is 0 0.2 again. I need to multiply those two to get my delta y, and I should get 0 0.52. And so my x-coordinate is 2.2 .2 plus 0 0.2, so 2.4. And then my y-coordinate is 0 0.4 plus 0.52. That should be 0.92. And again, we keep going. So as you can see, it's kind of repetitive. Um, we're doing the same process over and over again, but it's hopefully going to get us um, a pretty good result. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep filling out this chart. Um, if you at any point would like to pause the video and try this um, by yourself, go ahead and do so. Um, otherwise, just keep kind of following along if I'm at a good pace for you. Um, so here I just filled this out this next column, um, and I got my new point was 2.6, 1.584. And so I'm going to use blue for this next one. So I'm almost done. Got a few more. So 2.6, 1.584. ZY, um, um, DX is just X plus Y, so it's 4.184 um, times 0 0.2. And that should get me 0 0.8368. And as you can see, as we go along with our delta Ys, they're getting kind of more, there's more and more decimal places. Um, which will hopefully make them more accurate. Um, so then I get 2.8 comma uh, 2.4208, 2.4208. All right, so we have one more to do. So I'm going to extend my lines a little bit. Then we have one more to do. So my point is 2.8. 2.4208, and when I add those two together, I get 5.2208 times 0 0.2. Multiply those two together, 1.04416. And so the point I end at is the point I want. Um, when I add 0 0.2, I get 3. And when I add my delta y, I get 3.46496. 3.46496. And so f of 3, I estimate, is about 3.4649. So that's how we're using um, kind of Euler's method to get us to help better approximate these values. So we should end up 3.4649 is probably a pretty good approximation. Um, but if we use the smaller step size, um, 0 0.002, we get an even more um, accurate estimation. But again, it all considers where you start off. So we started going from 2 to 3. Um, if we went from 2.5 to 3, that might be a little bit more accurate. Um, if we went from one to three, that would probably be less accurate. So there's a lot that we can do with Euler's method, but this is pretty much the process for it. Moving on to Newton's law of cooling. Um, this is a special law that helps us kind of um, work our way around situations where, for exa example, we have a mug of hot coffee. Uh, if we leave it out for longer, we can kind of tell how long it will take for it to cool down. Um, or if we don't want it to cool down, we'll have to see like how long we can leave it out before it reaches a certain temperature. Um, so it's, the name kind of gives it away, the law of cooling. Um, 
It also applies to warming as well, warming objects up. Um, and so it's dependent on really, um, we have our, this is our differential equation up, um, the first equation. So that's our differential equation. And so we have big T, which is temperatures, little t, which is time, and K, that's our, that's our rate of change, that's our constant. Um, and so when we integrate that formula, we get the second formula, which is T minus T sub S equals T naught minus T S times E to the negative K T, right? And so T is the temperature of the object at a specific time T. T sub S is our surrounding temperature of the object. So again, if we had a coffee cup out um, on our front porch on a cold January day, that temperature would be maybe um, 20 degrees Fahrenheit versus our coffee temperature would be maybe 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And so T sub um, T naught is the temperature of the object at time T equals zero. And so, so we have all these temperatures um, going on. We have a lot of different things happening. Um, but this is what we're going to use um, in order to find maybe another temperature, maybe K. Um, but this is just our basic formula that we're going to use. So this is something that you have to be able to memorize. So here we're given a situation where we have a hard-boiled egg and its current temperature is 98 degrees Celsius. It is put in a pan under running um, water, which is 18 degrees Celsius. And after five minutes, the egg's temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. So we're asked, how much longer will it take the egg to reach 20 degrees Celsius? So when I think back to that equation, um, I know my T minus TS equals T naught minus TS times E to the negative KT. Um, I might, just first looking at this, I think I have to find um, K first. So I think I have to use this information to find K first because I'm given none of that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first try to get this, um, everything I possibly know plugged in. So I know that TS equals 18 degrees Celsius, T naught equals 98. Um, and in the scenario I'm given, in this first scenario, I'm given five minutes the egg's temperature is found to be 38 degrees. Um, so I'm going to use T equals 5. I'm going to keep it in minutes. And I'm going to use T, big T, regular T, equals 38. All right, and I'm going to plug these into my equation um, right up above. So 38 minus 18 equals 98 minus 18 times E to the negative 5K. 5K. All right. So now from here, this is just a little bit of algebraic um, maneuvering. Um, so when I get 38 minus 18, I get 20 equals 98 minus 18 equals 80 e to the negative 5k. And then I should get e to the negative 5k is equal to 1 fourth, taking ln negative 5k equals ln of 1 fourth. And when I plug this in my calculator, I should get k is equal to um, 0.2772. Um, so you could leave it as ln. I'm going to choose just to leave it as this. So now I know, going back to my original formula, um, now I know that this relationship is going to be um, T minus 18 equals 98 minus 18 E to the negative um, 0.2772 T. And so now I'm asked to find um, how much longer it will take the egg to reach 28 degrees Celsius. And so, or sorry, not 28, just regular 20 degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in um, 20 for T. And basically, I'm going to kind of do the same thing, and I'm going to solve for t. And so when we do all this, we should get t um, is equal to about 13.3. But remember, the question is asking how much longer um, it will take the egg to reach 20 degrees Celsius. And so we already know 
that it took five minutes to reach 38, um, and it takes 13 total minutes to reach 20, and so it will take an additional eight minutes to reach 20 degrees Celsius. Additional eight. So this is pretty much Newton's law of cooling. Um, we can use it for a couple different scenarios, um, but that's kind of it for the day. Um, this is all I have for you. I'm going to link a good video from Khan Academy of Euler's method, so you guys can kind of look and see um, another example. Um, but otherwise, just make sure that you have these two examples, and if you have any questions about these, um, you make sure to ask them during class. Um, but this is this is kind of it. This is it for differential equations. And so, um, yeah, thank you for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe.